what that kind of means for both of you in New York, how you approach DRs and what you're really trying to look for and kind of get out of um, this evolution in the space. Totally. So I think, you know, I'll come at it from, from the, I think like the grid optimization perspective. Um, I think there's also a really big uh, resilience component, but I'll maybe leave that for Duncan. <laughs> so that's really his wheelhouse. But for, I mean, for me, I think where you are is right. It is going to be super dependent. And what we have in, in New York city, for example, is a lot of um, congestion of like getting clean power from upstate to downstate. Um, and so one solution is building more transmission, which is definitely on the table and is probably warranted and needed. But I think other solutions is, you know, how do you better um, place DERs within a constrained grid in order to have relief um, where you need it and when you need it? And how could you offset, um, you know, peakers? There's some really interesting projects happening um, with an existing peaker plant and that's trying to convert to storage in New York City. And so for me, it's like, can you reduce local pollution through DERs? Can you better optimize the grid so you don't have to build as much new transmission lines in to a system? And then from my perspective too, like if you then, if those DERs are including systems that include backup storage, how can you, when there are grid outages also improve people's, like to me, that's sort of like an added benefit on top of everything. but. I think there is so, we're gonna be adding so much load to the grid in the future um, through electrification that being able to like optimize and be really flexible is gonna be really important to not having to overbuild generation systems. Uh, and I personally think that like, I would like to keep as much, like I think solar and wind are wonderful. I personally think wind is really beautiful, but like, I don't want us to have windmills everywhere. And so I think we need to be really smart about like how we build and design systems so that we're efficient. I, I want to just highlight yeah. something you said, Colleen, that I think is so crazy. Like in New York, everything's a DER, right? You could be talking about <laughs> replacing a 100 megawatt peaker plant with a battery. That's a DER. It's like right in the middle of the city connected to the distribution grid. It's kind of crazy. Like New York is the craziest grid in the country. And it's really yeah. interesting because of that especially being transmission constrained and all of that. Um, I mean, my answer would be like, I, <laughs> I live in New York, but I actually don't do most of my projects here. Um, most of my work lately is in California, which is like very, very different, you know, faces different challenges. So much of what we do is based on public safety power shutoffs lately and, you know, helping people have power when, you know, the, the larger system is in a tough spot and, and has to shut down to prevent, you know, larger disasters. Um, so I don't know, I, I found that interesting. I've been doing that for the last few years, whereas previously I did all my work in like super dense urban areas like New York City. Um, so I don't know, it's been cool, cool to kind of see the contrast there. Well, and kind of unpacking that, you mentioned you're doing a lot on the West Coast. Like, is this, um, if you're okay with kind of sharing, are you, are you coming across a lot of these through people reaching out to you or how are these projects kind of uh, coming across your radar for your company and uh, or being based in New York. Totally, yeah. So we we have a uh, an office in California. I I work on a lot of these projects despite living here. But you know, so we have people there, and you know, they're they're kind of working within that market. I mean, but how this is really happening, right? Is you know, people are losing power a lot, and when that happens, they go out and try to find solutions, right? Like it's it's we use this word a lot on our podcast, like it's emergent, right? People just do whatever they can figure out. Um, and what you'll find in California is the past few years have been the best years for Generac salespeople of their lives, right? They're all driving new trucks, uh, you know, maybe moving into new houses, right? Like, so that's sort of the main thing that's happening is people are just buying diesel backup generators. Um, what we're trying to do is kind of inject ourselves into that process and say, you could do that, or you could buy this system that can give you all the same backup benefits, but actually be good for you and be good for the grid, the 99% of other hours of the year. So, so that's kind of the way we're, we're approaching it. Um, in addition to though, just, there's a lot of really cool activity in California. Like there's, 
a bunch of schools that are in, installing solar plus storage. There's there's all sorts of like interesting stuff uh, happening there that you know we sort of bump elbows with as well. I'd be curious, kind of just given your exposure kind of across the country better, would you say the pilots on the West Coast are kind of more common and maybe a little more forward thinking or is it pretty, pretty universal across the US right now? Um, definitely not universal. However, um, I mean, both New York and California have really cool stuff going on, um, probably more so than anywhere else in the US. Um, one thing the California market has going for it, right, is just like broadly power is expensive. So you can have a bit more fun with your solutions, right? Because the economics are a little easier to make work. Um, and there's some generous incentives there too. Um, you know, but at the same time, you could say that. So there's lots of cool solar plus storage projects happening in California. At the same time, there's things happening in New York that are really unique that aren't happening there. New York's community solar program and the whole VDER, you know, value of distributed energy uh, rates um, are super innovative and have like sparked a, a big market here, both New York City, but upstate as well. Um, so I think it's just different. I'd say, you know, there's, there's sort of like two different approaches. I think New York's trying to take the like, you know, think about this kind of from like a fundamental engineering and economics perspective and like, build up this market and California is a bit more forceful and tends to kind of like go top down and just like make stuff happen. Um, and I don't know, both, both produce pretty interesting results. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to visit our website, connectingthegrid.com. There you can listen to our podcasts, contact us about sponsorship, or even be a guest on Grid Connections. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a positive rating on your favorite podcast or video streaming service. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out a lot too. Thank you again, and I look forward to us learning more together soon.